AI-powered AR reads your mind. Plus, you won't believe what Spotify does with data about you. Welcome to 2024, where your digital twin can attend meetings for you and your living room changes color based on your mood. Sound like sci-fi? Think again. Augmented reality is about to make your wildest tech dreams or nightmares come true. Buckle up, because we're diving headfirst into a world where the line between real and virtual is blurrier than your vision after a VR marathon. All right, you brilliant pixel pioneers and reality renegades, brace yourselves for another mind-bending episode. I'm your host, Theodore, reluctantly ready to be your guide through the digital funhouse of augmented reality that's warping our world faster than you can say, glitchy hologram. Oh, and before my brain decides to wander off into a tangent about the fascinating history of Viewmaster, did you know it was originally marketed as an educational tool? Talk about mission creep. Let me introduce our resident experts, Gwen, our AR alchemist, and Charlie, our digital reality ranger. Today, my dear holographic hallucination enthusiasts, we're diving headfirst into the world of AR and its impact on, well, everything. From AI-powered digital twins that can attend your boring meetings for you, finally a use for cloning, to mood-reading rooms that might know you're hangry before you do. We're talking marketing campaigns so immersive, you'll forget what's real and what's augmented. Kind of like scrolling social media at 3 a.m., but with more floating logos. So, sync up those synapses, my cherished cognitive explorers. Whether you're an AR aficionado, a marketing maverick, or just someone who's wondered if we're living in a simulation, spoiler, AR is making that a lot more likely. This episode is your portal to understanding the digital overlay that's about to repaint our world. And remember, this is episode 18 of our Augmented Reality and Marketing Campaign series, part of an entire day exploring creative realms and professional growth. Today, we're seeing how AR is not just changing what we see, but potentially who we are. Let's embark on this digital odyssey and see if we can decode the future of reality before my attention span decides to create its own augmented distraction again. Welcome in uh, to this deep dive you've been sending in those articles on augmented reality. So you're clearly interested in this and, and want to know more, which is fantastic. Um, and, you know, looking at these articles, it seems like every day there's something new, a new headline, a new breakthrough. And it can be tough to sort of separate the, the hype from the, the real potential. So that's what we're going to do today. We're diving deep into augmented reality. You've sent in some really interesting stuff. Uh, we've got this great report, 12 Augmented Reality Technology Trends for Business to Watch in 2024-2025. That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. But it's got some juicy insights. Uh, you've also got 14 examples of augmented reality brand experiences. Always love seeing how brands are actually putting this tech into practice. And then to round it out, we've got these fascinating case studies. Toyota letting you test drive a car from your driveway through AR. That's wild. So, yeah, we've got a lot to unpack here. It's quite a collection. And it really speaks to how quickly AR is moving beyond those early gimmick phases. Like, remember when it was all about catching Pokemon on our phones? Now we're talking about transforming industries from healthcare to manufacturing to, yeah, even test driving cars from your couch. It's amazing to think how far it's come and how fast it's moving. And speaking of moving fast, one of the biggest trends that jumps out from these articles is the role of AI. AI is like the turbocharger for augmented reality right now. Absolutely. It's the secret sauce that's taking AR from cool to truly transformative. It's not just about overlaying digital images on the real world anymore. It's about those digital elements actually understanding and reacting to what's around them. Exactly. And that's all thanks to AI. Like that example in one of the articles about Apple Vision Pro's persona feature. It's not just about video calls with a headset on. They're using AI to actually scan your face and create this incredibly realistic digital avatar of you. It's like having a digital twin. Right. Wow. So even though you're wearing this headset, your friends see a really convincing representation of you reacting in real time. So much more immersive than just a static image. Way more immersive. 
And it just scratches the surface of what AI can do for AR. Yeah, it's not just about faces either, right? I mean, you've got mm -hmm. things like IKEA's app that scans your room and helps you visualize furniture placement in your own space, or Google Translate using AI to do real-time text translation. Imagine pointing your phone at a menu in Japanese and boom, it's instantly in English. It's incredible how seamless it's becoming. It's only going to get more sophisticated. Imagine dictating an idea for a 3D object and having an AR app design it based on your description. Tools like Spline are already hinting at a future where anyone can become a creator even without advanced technical skills. That's where it gets really exciting because this isn't just about cool tech. It's about a future where our devices anticipate our needs, feed us information instantly, maybe even personalize our surroundings based on our mood. I mean, picture this, you walk into a room and the lighting adjusts to your emotional state or your favorite music starts playing because your device knows it helps you focus. That's the power of AI infused into AR. It's about creating these hyper-personalized experiences that blend seamlessly with our lives. And that's what elevates AR from a novelty to a truly transformative technology with the potential to reshape our world. Okay, so we've established AI as a game changer, but where are people actually experiencing these augmented realities? And that leads us to our next trend. It's mobile first, but headsets are coming. And those headsets are promising experiences far beyond what our smartphones can offer. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The articles make it clear that for now, mobile is still king. Absolute modal devices are still the main platform for AR and for good reason. They're accessible, they're powerful, and they're constantly evolving. In fact, the prediction is for a heck on a whopping 1.7 billion mobile AR users worldwide by next year. Wow, 1.7 billion. I have to admit, I thought that number might be even higher given how ubiquitous smartphones are these days, but I guess it shows that widespread AR adoption still has some ground to cover. It does, but the foundation is clearly there. And what's driving this growth, as these articles highlight, are the constant improvements to AR development platforms. Our core and our kit, the software building blocks for Android and Apple, respectively, are getting more sophisticated with each update. And those updates aren't just about fancy features for developers to play with, right? They're translating into tangible benefits for the end user. Exactly. For example, the latest version of Google's AR core lets developers incorporate the phone's flashlight to enhance AR experiences even in low light. Imagine exploring a museum exhibit at night and using your phone's flashlight to illuminate virtual artifacts in front of you. That's the kind of seamless integration we're starting to see. That's amazing. And then on the Apple side of things, AirKit 6 is bringing its own set of advancements. It enables 4K video capture within AR experiences, lets developers place virtual objects in a scene instantly without scanning the environment first, and enhances motion capture for more realistic experiences. We're talking about virtual objects interacting with the real world in a much more believable way. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. With AirKit 6, we're also seeing advances in scene geometry, which to put it simply means virtual objects can now interact with the physical environment more realistically. Imagine placing a virtual ball on a table and it actually rolls around like a real object would. It's these subtle details that make augmented reality experiences more immersive and engaging. That's so cool. But even with all of these incredible mobile advancements, I can't help but feel like we're still just scratching the surface of what AR can really do. And that's where those headsets come in, right? Precisely while our smartphones offer a window into the augmented world headsets like Apple Vision Pro and MetaQuest have the potential to blow that window wide open, we're talking about creating truly immersive experiences mm -hmm. by taking over your entire field of vision. Yeah, it's like the difference between you know, watching a 3D movie on your phone and actually experiencing it in like a state-of-the-art IMAX theater. Both can be cool, but the level of immersion just hits different. It's a whole other level, and that's what headsets offer that potential to transport us to entirely new worlds, blending the digital and physical in a way that just isn't possible with the phone screen. Welcome back to the deep dive. Okay, so imagine this. You're a surgeon, you're in the middle of a really delicate operation, and you've got this headset on. And it's giving you x-ray vision in real time. You can see inside the patient without ever having to look away from the operating table. And your hands are free to perform those intricate procedures with incredible precision. Or think about an architect being able to walk through a building before a single brick is laid experiencing the space, making adjustments on the fly. Okay, that's some serious Iron Man stuff right there. But speaking of futuristic visions, headsets also bring to mind the metaverse. 
which let's be real, hasn't quite lived up to the hype yet. Yeah, the idea of spending hours on end in completely virtual worlds hasn't quite caught on as some predicted. But AR's foray into that space, what we call social AR, is already making waves. And thankfully, it's far more grounded in reality than fully virtual worlds. Exactly. It's not about replacing real world interactions, but enhancing them. So we're talking about experiences that bridge the gap between people make our connections more meaningful, more engaging. You know, think back to the Pokemon Go craze. Oh yeah, everybody was out there chasing Pokemon. It was a simple concept, but it tapped into something fundamental about our desire for connection, for shared experiences. And those experiences are getting more and more sophisticated. Like that example from one of the articles about the Barbie movie release. Warner Bros. teamed up with Snapchat to create these really fun AR experiences tied to real world locations. Okay, so you're walking past the Eiffel Tower or maybe the Statue of Liberty. And you hold up your phone and suddenly they're transformed into these bright pink barbie versions of themselves. It's clever, it's engaging, and it gets people talking and interacting with each other, both online and offline. And it's a great example of how brands are using social AR to create those buzzworthy, shareable moments. It's about tapping into the power of social media and AR to create a sense of community, yeah. a shared experience. And it's not just about those big flashy events either, right? Even those silly AR filters that let you swap faces with your friends or try on funny hats together. Those little moments of connection of shared laughter, they're important too. Absolutely. They add a layer of playfulness mm -hmm. to our interactions and they're surprisingly effective at strengthening bonds. Okay, but it gets even cooler. One of the articles mentioned the weekend holding an AR concert on TikTok. Imagine attending a concert from your living room. With your comments, your reactions showing up in the virtual space for everyone to see. It's a whole new level of audience engagement and interaction. And it's not limited to concerts either. Imagine attending a sporting event virtually and being able to cheer with other fans from around the world. Or even joining a virtual protest march and having your presence felt even if you can't be there physically. It's like we can be together even when we're apart. Precisely. And that brings us to a thought-provoking question for you, our listener. Imagine a future where we can share not just photos of our vacations, but entire augmented experiences with friends and family. Okay, so let's say you went on this amazing hike and you want your friends to experience it too. What if you could virtually relive that hike, feeling the wind on your face, the sun on your skin, or share a meal with loved ones who couldn't be there in person? Social AR has the potential to change the way we connect and share our lives in ways we can only begin to imagine. The possibilities are truly exciting. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We've talked about AI-powered AR, the rise of mobile and headsets, and even the potential of social AR to connect us in new and meaningful ways. But as with any emerging technology, there are always challenges to overcome. Absolutely, and it's important to acknowledge those challenges head on. One of the biggest hurdles facing widespread AR adoption is, of course, access to the technology itself. Right. Not everyone has the latest smartphone, let alone a high-powered AR headset. And that's where WeBar comes in. It might not offer the same bells and whistles as a dedicated app or headset, but it at least provides a more accessible entry point for both brands and consumers to experiment with AR. It's a way to dip your toes in the water without having to make a huge investment. Exactly. And then, of course, there's the technical side of things. Developing these AR experiences, especially the really immersive and interactive ones, it takes a lot of specialized skills and resources. Yeah, it's not as simple as building a website or designing a mobile app. There's a steep learning curve, and that can be a barrier to entry for some companies and creators. Definitely, and that's why it's crucial for brands and developers to focus on creating AR experiences that offer genuine value to users, not just novelty for novelty's sake. We've all experienced that AR fatigue, right? When something is overly complicated, clunky, yep. or just plain pointless. Yeah. It's like just because you can throw an AR experience on top of something doesn't mean you should. Sometimes a good old-fashioned website or video is still the way to go. Exactly. It's about choosing the right tool for the job. Yeah. And that's where that human element of creativity and strategy comes in. Right. It's about finding that sweet spot where AR enhances the experience without overshadowing the message or overwhelming the user. And that's something that both brands and developers need to be mindful of as AR continues to evolve. Yeah. Because despite the challenges, 
the, the potential is just undeniable. Oh, absolutely. We're just scratching the surface of what's possible. Remember that stat, 1.7 billion mobile AR users by next year? That number is only going to skyrocket as the technology gets more powerful, more accessible, and more seamlessly integrated into our lives. It's moving fast, and it's an invitation to be an early adopter, to experiment, to play and to start envisioning how AR can enhance your world, whatever that world may be. So to all of you listening out there, whether you're a business leader, a creative professional, or just someone who's curious about the future, now is the time to dive headfirst into this exciting frontier. Because as we've seen, AR is more than just a cool technology. It's a powerful tool for connection, innovation, and shaping the future. It's about pushing boundaries, breaking down barriers, and reimagining what's possible. So keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. Until next time. Well, my esteemed electronic explorers and beloved binary broadcasters, we've reached the end of our journey through the AR-powered looking glass. Feeling like your brain just went through a hard reset? Yeah, mine too. So what's your take? Ready to embrace your digital twin and mood reading living room? Or are you clutching your analog reality a little tighter? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you team, bring on the AR revolution? Or keep your algorithms off my emotions? Your voice matters in this grand experiment we call the future of reality. Remember, every technological revolution in history started with someone asking, what if? So keep questioning, keep exploring, and who knows, maybe you'll be the one to create the next big AR breakthrough. Just promise me you'll use your powers for good, okay? No AR-powered dad joke generators, please. The world isn't ready for that level of augmented, grown-worthy content. Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and for the love of all that is pixelated, don't forget that reality is what you make of it, augmented or not. This is Theodore, signing off from the intersection of bits and atoms. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go make sure my digital twin hasn't taken over my social media accounts. It's way too charming for its own good. <laughs>